Heyo everybody, Hanko here with my review for Tower of God Chapter 402 or Season 2 Episode 322. Uh, sorry yesterday when I did the live reaction I got the number wrong at the beginning because uh, I glanced up at the page URL and that's always a number off. Uh, but either way, this is a really good one. I actually took quite a lot of notes compared to uh, lately on this one. Uh, so I don't know if this will be a long review or not, because sometimes that means it's a longer review, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but there was a lot of stuff that happened here, we got a lot of new stuff, and a bunch of stuff that I really, really liked personally. Um, so I'll start discussing it at the beginning, because of course it's just easiest to go that way. Um, so starting off, the First Division and Elpathian are arriving. Elpathian looks a bit goofy, I'll admit. Um, like, I'm not saying it's like, oh, so bad, it's terrible, it's it's not that bad or anything. I'm just saying compared to other designs, I guess the best way to put it is like, compare his color scheme and his design and Shonhi's color scheme and design, which is also a little bit on the goofy side, but not as much, uh, to somebody with a really, really good design, like um, Karaka's design, all the different textures, the mystery behind it, uh, the shape of the mask. Um, the color of his eyes and the robe with all the um, markings on it and everything. Or Yuri's design where you have sort of the black hair and outfit with the small bit of um, white from her hands and face and the bit of red from her hair accessory, skirt, and, um, and eyes. So it's like you have these really cool color schemes and designs, or Bomb's design is really, really good. Um, and Sachi's design. There's a lot of them that are good designs. Even Rachel's for her character is a very good design. And then you can imagine them in all these different situations where they could look scary, they could look cool. And then Elpathian, it's hard to see him as cool or scary because he has this big old headpiece that looks very, very, I don't know, the opposite of useful. It seems like it would hinder his movement a bit in a lot of situations. Um, and anything where you have any part of a costume that looks somewhat like a diaper, that definitely takes it way, way down. And Elpathian suffers from that, that, uh, that diaper syndrome. Uh, and Chion, he's a bit much too. I think that it's maybe both of them overuse blue, I think, a bit too much in their color scheme. That might be a thing. They overuse blue a bit. Uh, there's not a lot of variety in Elpathian's color scheme. He's just a bunch of different shades of blue, really. Um, and it doesn't look too great. So, again, I'm being a little bit overcritical. It's not that big a deal. I'm just comparing it and contrasting it, because after this we get a really, really good character design with Ari Bright Sharon. Um, so she might not even be that important of a character, but I love the design. Her costume looks really cool. This color scheme where there's a lot of white, a little bit of gold and fitting with her blonde hair, and a bit of red, like the cape, and I think she has a badge that's red too. Um, but Ari Bright Sharon has a really good character design. Um, so I love her design and her color scheme a lot, and she's the first Ari member I think we've seen. I think we had another that was mentioned, um, like Ju Sung or something like that. I think we had another that was mentioned earlier, but, um, but she's the first Ari member I think that we've actually seen. Um, so uh, we also, and she's the commander of Division 1, and we had the assistant commander for Division 1, uh, Cool Nissan K, uh, name very similar to Kuhn. Uh, he also has kind of the blue thing going on. Cool Nissan K, of course it's not like this outstanding good character design like Ari Bright Sharon, but he also has a pretty good design. Or she, it's hard to tell in Tower of God sometimes. Um, so one thing that's mentioned to Yuri and Evan by um, Chionhi is that three of the four squadrons are assembling and they have to mean divisions and, and some of you said in the comments as well uh, the exact thing that I was saying in the live reaction they have to mean divisions there is no way three of four squadrons are showing up here that's three-fourths of the army in this one place but three out of four divisions would make sense because that's still a big serious thing. The divisions have high rankers in them. Um, so this is a serious big thing if three divisions are showing up. Also it wouldn't make sense for them to be saying squadrons because they're making a big deal about the squadron commander Kalavan on the way. Uh, and if more than one squadron was showing up they probably wouldn't need more they would probably be making an even bigger deal than just Kalavan. Um, so I think they've got to mean divisions there and not squadrons. Um, just trying to uh, 
figure things out. Uh, and Evan and Yuri both look really shocked at this, showing how big a deal it is for this to be happening, and how sort of unprecedented it is that, like they say, they would call in this much to go after regulars. So they know that there's a bit more going on here than what they might have first expected. Uh, but we see Levy and Bomb's confrontation now. Levy's very overconfident. Uh, Bomb is immune to whatever this question mark curse he has is, though, which makes sense because Bomb is an irregular. And the general thing we've seen with irregulars, especially Bomb, is that whenever there's a rule for something, he just sort of breaks the rule. So for something like this, that kind of works expressly on rules where he it seems like he asks them a question and they are harmed or die if they don't answer. Um, it seems like something with clear rules like that, Bomb's probably an exception. Uh, one thing I loved about this scene so much though was So Young finding out that he just got off the train and just in the middle of this tense situation, bodies all around them, she goes like happy cheery greeter mode. She's like full on customer service. Um, so Seung was hilarious. I really loved her character in this chapter. Uh, Zahard gave Levy spells, we find out. And there was something mentioned in the blog about, like, you can be given spells or use a medium, but the translators said they weren't sure about that sentence. So I think it could be interesting. It could be something like he's given skills or spells, so he doesn't need to use a medium. Whereas we know Bomb eventually will you will learn to use spells, and he'll probably use the um, the orb is a medium. Uh, that was the name, right? Yeah, the orb. He'll probably use that as a medium because when the orb was first introduced, uh, CU said it was the first step for Bomb being able to use Shinsu like spells. Um, and then the other person we know that uses spells is Sachi, and Sachi uses a wand type thing to do it. It looks kind of like a mace, but I believe it's been called a wand before. Um, so uh, we have that. Uh, he mentions that his allies became rankers, but he stayed as a regular to work for Zahard. So at first thought, I would be like, holy crap, that means he is super friggin' strong, right? Uh, but then some of you pointed out in the comments and made me realize it because I was like, he can't be that strong for Bound to be going up against right now unless there's some catch to it. But as it was pointed out in the comments, they said he was only a D-rank regular. So if he's only D-rank, he can't be that strong. I mean, Parkle was a C rank, so we don't really know what makes the regulars a certain rank. We never learned that, but judging that he's only a D rank, he's going to be a tough special enemy for Bomb, but we can assume he isn't that strong, especially something else CU says in the blog, but I'll get to that when I get to the blog. Um, he uses another spell called Deathly Blizzard, which corrupts the soul, causing you to um, want to end your own life. Uh, but Bomb stops it using reverse flow control and just rushes in for a counterattack. Uh, but his counterattack is thwarted by a spell called Hair of an Ancient Saint that lets Levy just become a hare, essentially, and scatter off into the wind. And he uses that to just run away and escape. Um, and Drossi shows up doing the Yuri kick from way back at the beginning of the series. Um, and So Young finds Ryuan, presumably dead. Everybody seems pretty dead. Uh, Levy, though, after escaping, he's like, oh yeah, that was pretty fun, can't wait till we meet again, and then he just gets in pain for some reason. Uh, perhaps Bomb reflected his spell back onto him somehow? Uh, I don't, I don't know what's going on whatsoever, but he seems in pain for some reason. Um, then Li Xiaowun appears on a bunch of screens and gives a message that the regulars need to leave and they're not going to be accepting them and everything. And not only Soyoung, who we know is against this, but Sowa seemed a bit against this too. The way that he looked at the uh, message and said dad seemed like he was uh, really conflicted over what he's doing and he wasn't sure about what Li Xiaowun is getting at here. But then the message switches over to one from Elpathian, talking about the hostages and how they plan to execute them. So Andrasi says, you know, Warion must have lied to us and must have said that it was safer for Sachi's group than it actually was. Which makes total sense, because we saw before that Warion tried to make... And what Bomb has this interaction with Andrasi later on about... Um, it all is really, really good development that's gone on throughout all of Helltrain. Because if you remember, the very story of Bomb at the beginning of Helltrain 
was Warian was telling him, gain companions that you don't mind getting rid of on the way up. And then he had to leave behind Hana, Felix, etc. Um, sadly, I wish they could come back, but no, he left behind some people. And then once we got to Name Hunt Station, he had this really good scene with um, Kuhn on the one floating ship where he was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't be Juvial Grace. I can't leave people behind. That's not who I am. And uh, Kuhn pretty much said, you're cool to be who you are. You don't have to worry about following what FUG wants. You have to make your own path. So this is continuing on that development where Bomb says, I don't care if the army kills me, I have to go save them because that's who I am. There's something I care about more than dying and that's not leaving people behind. Or care about more than not dying and that's not leaving people behind. So again, really, really great. And what I think is great not only about the bomb scene is that it's really, really good development for Androsi too, where she smiles knowing that she knows bomb. And knowing per somebody is an important thing, where she doesn't know if Bomb has really become Juvial Grace, even though he's technically always been Juvial Grace. Um, but she realizes that even with all his new strength and everything he's been through, at a moral level, he's still the Bomb that she knew that when she first met him and became friends with him and he kind of saved her. So this is good for Androsi. Again, Androsi having a lot of character struggles in the past few arcs. Uh, the past few arcs have really done so much for Androsi's character. I wasn't a big fan. I thought she was super overhyped. And then the past few arcs, Androsi's character has just been developed so well. So, uh, yeah, I'm fully on board the Androsi hype train now. Um, then lastly, we see that Evan Kell and Yuan Sung were sent to Karaka's heart which is in a place cut off from the outside, and there's a couple of his minions there to protect it. So, um, then a warp gate forms, and Deathbird, I believe is his name, says that it's because uh, that happens when Karaka's in danger, and they can see all of Zahard's army gathered and all that. So Evan Kell, Yuan Sung, Deathbird, and three more presumed servants of Karaka um, go and mobilize in order to... Uh, in order to fight back. So that's going to be really cool next time if we go ahead and get straight into that. And really, until until or unless Kalavan shows up, they shouldn't be able to handle Evankel whatsoever, whatsoever. Evankel is number 60, and I believe that... What's her face? Uh, Chionhi should only be about like 400-some, 500-some. That's just a guess on my part from what we know about her. So if Chioni is like 400 some, 500 some, we can assume that Elpathion is pro well, Elpathion's probably stronger than that, actually. So maybe Elpathion could hold off a little bit against, um, we don't know how strong he is. He could hold off, um, Evankel for a bit. I doubt he's as strong, but he could be close, uh, but we don't really know. For him to be an assistant squadron commander, though... What what would that what would you what would you all think that would make him? I if he's an assistant squadron commander, he has to be really strong. He's got to be closing in on top 100 maybe. I mean, if not top 100, maybe like 150 or 200. Uh, Cause I wouldn't think he's like the strongest of the strong. But if there are only a few squadrons and they're Zahard's army, I guess. Yeah, I guess an assistant squadron commander would be pretty damn strong, so maybe he is close to around 100 for all we know. Um, I didn't really think of Elpathy in that way. But uh, we also have Ari Bright Sharon, who should be about at the same level as Chonhi. Uh, so we have all that. But before I get into more general discussion, we have the blog info. Um, where CU says stuff about, um, he says that Levy is a bit on the stronger side for chosen regulars, and that was another thing that I was saying that we'll wait for the blog earlier about, that was the thing, where I was saying that, you know, Levy's obviously going to be a good, strong enemy for Bomb this arc, but at the same time, he's not, like, super-duper amazing strong. Like, even for CU to say he's a bit on the stronger side for Chosen regulars makes me think, okay, he's a strong character to fight, but there's probably Chosen regulars even stronger than him that we're going to run into later. Um, 
Uh, he also brings up that Bomb is strong against spells and that we already have kind of seen it. Uh, so yeah, we already knew that. And he said, you know, it'll be explained more at some point, I think. But we can kind of probably assume that it's because he's an irregular and uh, spells probably affect him in different ways or maybe just not much at all. Um, he also brings up that Slayers are very different from normal high rankers when talking about Karaka's essential immortality. He has his heart stashed away and he can basically respawn his body and it has something to do with the armor it would seem and we're going to learn more about that later it would seem. Uh, and he also compares it to, um, to Yama who we know little about, at least I think it was Yama, who we know little about but we do know that he was a big part of the whole blood fusion thing so uh, he probably has some near immortality as well and of course like I've said before the slayers all have some special defining characteristic that would give them a way to bypass the uh, immortality of Zahard and the ten warriors because why else would they be slayers if they couldn't slay them um, so there's a reason for all that. Like White being technically irregular and immune from rules that affect rankers, even though he is a ranker's strength. Um, uh, he also brings up that Slayers can have armies, but because of the way that FUG is just like hidden and all of that, uh, it's kind of hard to mobilize them very quickly. But because we have this perfect situation where Evan Kell was happened to be there with some of the allies of Karaka. Karaka's army, or at least some of Karaka's allies, have been able to, uh, have been able to quickly mo- or quickly mobilize in order to get there and fight back. So, uh, yeah, it kind of shows the, uh, the bad side of just hiding away, uh, in society is that they can't quickly get together their army if, Kar if Karaka gets captured like this. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it for the blog. And some general thoughts for the end here, some of my favorite things and stuff. I love Ari Brycharen's design. Her design is so good, and I'm really excited to see what they do with the character. Um, I'm excited to see somebody from the Ari family. This is our first look at it uh, to try to guess things about the family from this character. Um, then I love the moment between Bomb and Andrasi, not only because it carries on the same development Bomb has been having throughout all of the Hell Train, but it also develops Andrasi a lot. So I really liked that moment with the two of them. And of course, I'm really excited to see what Evan Kell and Yuan Sung, what their group can do uh, moving forward. So I guess that is about it. Yep, so I would give it nine waves of reinforcements out of ten. I really, really liked this chapter. Uh, there was a lot of good stuff to talk about, so it did end up a bit on the longer side. But um, that's it. So like if you did like the video, comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more Tower of God, much more on the channel. And uh, follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you up to there or talk to you there about stuff for the channel or whatever. Uh, and if you want a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us on Discord, just ask and I'll give you a link. That's it. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.